I know it feels good to see the content that you share on social media gather a lot of likes or shares or views. But the question you need to be asking yourself is, do they add to my bottom line? Do they matter to my business goals? Now that um, content that has over a hundred likes, how does it translate to more revenue for your business? Or the content that has over a hundred um, shares, how does it translate to more customers for your products and for your service? Or your video that has over a thousand views, how does it increase your personal brand? That's the question you need to be asking yourself. If at the end of the day, a huge percentage of these people who have engaged with your content have now become paying customers, then the metrics that you're tracking are actually good. It shows that the algorithm is working in your favor. One thing I don't want you to do is to run after vanity metrics. So vanity metrics are actually any kind of metric that does not help you, that does not move you closer to your business goals. So if you're tracking likes in, you release the new product and then you have a, a thousand likes and you're tracking likes and not one person has sent you a DM to buy. That's a vanity metrics, okay? But for somebody who posts a video and they just want people to be, see the video and they have a thousand likes, for them, it's not a vanity metric. So you should understand the different metrics at the different and the different metrics to track at the different stages of your business. Social media mm -hmm. metrics help to tell how well or not your social media strategy is doing. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you four key social media metrics that you should track in your business. Number one is awareness metrics. Awareness metrics tell you. Um, they help you know how many people are actually seeing your content on social media. They tell you how many people know who you are. And the first metric under that is reach. So reach will inform you of how many people have seen the content that you've posted. It helps you, it shows you how far your content has stretched and how many people it has reached. That's what reach is about. So take for instance, um, you post a video on social media and you want to see you know, the number of people that have seen, you want to know the number of people, the percentage of people that have seen the video, what you will track is reach, okay? To help you know how many people the video has come across. Then the second one is impression, which is also similar to reach, but what it tells you, what makes it different from reach is that it tells you the number of times people have seen your video. So if you post a video on social media, for instance, and I see it once, and maybe 200 other people see it. Your reach is 200. 200 people have seen your video. But if I see it about four or five times, your analytics will tell you that a particular user has seen it this number of times. Number three is audience growth or follower growth. So it's also another example of awareness metrics. So as your followers are growing, you can see it from your analytics. So as people come across your account and they you know, like what you're sharing, they follow you. So rich impressions and audience growth, that is number of followers, are all awareness metrics that you should track in your business. Number two is engagement metrics. And engagement metrics shows you how much people are interacting or engaging with your content. And the first one under that is likes, okay? How many likes do you have? Well, personally, I don't really like to track likes because I've noticed that, because I do it as well. I, when I'm scrolling to social media, I just like randomly. I might not even read the content. I might not even spend like two or three seconds with the content. I just like. So it's something that I do mechanically. So I believe that other people do it as well. So I don't like to track likes. The second one under that is shares. Shares indicates that people like your content and they want other people to see it. So at the end of your content, what you can do to um, influence people to share is to put a call to action, telling people to share. Call to actions work like magic. Because sometimes we read and, you know, like we read a blog post or we watch a video and when we are done, we move to the next thing. But if at the end of that content, you are, um, you know, pleading with us to share, we might be prompted to. Because if, for instance, I read an article and I enjoy the article, 
and I'm done with the article, the next thing I want to do is go to another article. But if at the end of that post, at the end of that article, you've told me to share so that I am, you know, other people can see it and can help somebody who needs that information, I will do that as well. Then the third thing is comments. When people comment on your post, it indicates that they are really, you know, invested in what you have to share. And the best way to get people to comment is to post something really engaging, something that will actually um, compel them to comment. So maybe a question or something a bit controversial or something, um, you know, a general opinion. So what you can do, for instance, is the crisis that we are facing in this country right now. You can actually post something on that, post your opinion on that, and then you get comments. But one thing you should never do is to post co um, content that is controversial, that is highly controversial because you want comments. It's going to hurt your business brand. Number three is video metrics. So video metrics help you to understand and measure the impact of your video. They help you to know how well your video is doing. And the first thing under that is video views. If you post a YouTube video and you have a lot of views, uh, if say you have 1,000 views, that is practically telling you that 1,000 people have viewed your video. However, just a few seconds of watching your video on YouTube also counts as a view. So if someone watches your intro, the intro part of, a vi of your video, or they watch just like five seconds of a 25 minutes video, it's going to count as a view. So you don't really want to pay attention to that. You want to pay attention to the next one, which is video completion rates. So it shows you the rate at which people are watching your video from the beginning all through to the end. So in order to make sure, in order to increase that, what you want to do is post videos that is really interesting, post relevant videos that your audience will love. Number four is ROI metrics or return on investment metrics. And this tells you how well your investments on a particular piece of content are performed. And the first thing we have under that is click-through rates. So your click-through rates tells you the number of people, or the percentage of people who actually clicked on a link to go to the next step. So if, for instance, uh, let's say you send, a new, you send newsletters to people, and in that newsletter you've included a link to your store, the click-through rates will show you the number, uh, the percentage of people who clicked through the link, who clicked the link to go to your store. Okay, let me say it this way. It's the ratio of people who clicked a specific link as to the number of people who actually viewed the page. So if you have a web page and there are links in your web page, your click-through rate will show you the number of people, the percentage of people who actually clicked through the link. Then the second thing is conversion rate. And your conversion rate simply shows you the number of people or the percentage of people who take a desired action. So if you, um, you're checking your analytics and you see your click-through rate, and then those who actually clicked the link to go to your store now buy a product from your store, that's who, the people buying your products are going to be categorized as um, your leads. Those are the people, am I saying too much? Those are the, that's what your conversion rate is all about. Okay, for instance, you have an event, right? And you run an advert. Your conversion rate is the number of people who actually registered for that event. These are the people that took the desired action that you want to take, all right? So like I said, metrics can be different at different stages of the business and it can also be different for different kinds of business. But you need to understand your business. You need to understand the stage that you are and also you need to put your business goals in mind so that you can ensure that you are not running after vanity metrics that's the end of today's video if you love this video please like and um, share of course and also subscribe to this channel right don't forget to follow me on instagram after patrick one i will see you in the next video